Hey everybody, Mr. Lawrence here. This is the Piano Adventure Series by Nancy and Randall Faber. Level 1, lesson book, page 36. The name of the song is Forest Drums. Okay? So, in this particular page, we are introduced to the half rest and whole rest. I say introduced only because you haven't played them necessarily, but uh, you should have gotten acquainted to these a long time ago. Uh, the half rest sits above. This is just showing you where it sits. Okay? This is the most significant part of it. you got to know that it gets two beats. It's called a half rest. So it gets two beats, just like a half note. All right? And uh, oftentimes you'll find music teachers trying to give you little hints to, uh, to remember what each you know, rest and note is and this and that. So the reason why, um, uh, I mean, not the reason why this is called a half rest, but because it is a half rest, we like to think of it as a hat sitting on that third line there. One, two, three. A hat sitting on the third line. So the hat is supposed to help us remember that it's a half rest. Hat, half. Okay, so anyway, I don't know if that'll work for you. Uh, it has for hundreds of others. Okay, so then we have the whole rest, which is under the fourth line. Okay, so if it's a whole rest, how many beats does it get? Yep, it sits right there. Four beats of silence or rest for any whole measure, okay? It's just like a whole, re a whole note gets four beats of sound. A whole rest gets four beats of no sound, okay? Uh, another little helpful hint that we music teachers like to throw out there is that this one looks like a hole that you would step into, okay? So if this was, if fourth line was the ground, and then this, you imagine you got to use your creative imagination this could be a hole that you step into, and that's how we can remember that it's a hole, even though a hole in this case is different than the spelling of hole here. Uh, anyway, I hope you get the correlation there. It's just to help you remember that a whole rest looks like a hole. Hat, half rest looks like a hat. All right, so I feel like I'm taking way too long to explain that. Uh, seems like things are a lot easier when we're in the classroom together. So the point there is, you're seeing all these whole rests, boom, okay? Especially in that first line, the right hand doesn't play, okay? Then we have quarter rest, quarter rest, and then quarter rest there, okay? So we see half rests, half rest, half rest, half rest, and the left hand, all right? So it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Four. Okay? Soft at the beginning. We have staccatos. Okay? Notice it says here, although it starts at piano, soft, we're growing louder. We get up to a mezzo forte, medium loud. Okay? Make sure you're paying attention always to fingering. This, In this case, third finger on F. Okay? We go from staccato to smooth. Staccato to smooth or legato, okay? Paying attention to fingering and notes, of course. All right. We move over to the second page, forte, okay? And, you know, if, if you just pay attention to the details, pay attention, pay attention, pay attention to the details. That oftentimes is what messes up everybody, is they're not paying attention to the details. You're just trying to read the notes, but you're not looking at all the music symbols, okay? I'm not trying to be accusatory, but that's oftentimes the reason why mistakes are made, okay? It's because we're not paying attention to the details, all right? So, here's one thing we've got to make sure we pay attention to, because this is a frequent mistake. Here, in this measure, we have the D and the A, just like over on the previous page, okay? But then oftentimes, students don't adjust... You're not looking at the notes carefully. We have D and A, D on the bottom, A on top. But then here we have C on the bottom, G on top. Okay? You're, you've gotten so used to playing D and A in this song that you're not seeing, some people, I should say, don't see the, the changes to C and G. Okay? So, just pay attention to the details, like these tied notes here, tied notes. Man, look at how long this is tied. Oh, my goodness. We play here, we're holding this out for one, two, three, four measures. Four times four is 16. You're holding it out for 16 beats. Oh my goodness. What? That's crazy. 
All right, same thing that we see over here on the second page. All right, just pay attention to details, and boom, we have a octave sign. So this is play one octave lower than written. So whereas the whole song you've been playing D and A right there where it's written, now you play it one octave lower to the left. Okay, so I'm going to black out my video. I'm going to play with two hands. Here it is, forest drums. Now, I don't know if you can hear the mistakes that I've made in there, but I actually made some mistakes, not in the notes, but in how I played them. Areas like this. I played this whole measure in the right hand, staccato. I don't know why I do that. Hmm, but I did that here, and I did that over on the second page in the same spot of notes. Don't make the same mistakes. You gotta be careful with those kinds of things, okay? That's why we practice. Practice, practice makes perfect. Well, perfect practice makes perfect. That's a whole nother lesson in and of itself. Signing off for now. Bye-bye.